I'm Max Sterling, welcome to LARPgasm. So I decided that I needed uh, something to hang up in my work shed here uh, to sort of spruce it up a bit. So I decided to put up some posters, but I wanted to make sure that I did something that was pretty cool. So I've been playing a lot of Fallout, and sort of the whole Fallout 4 thing is that you have this workshop and you can build stuff and so on and so forth. So I found this uh, Nuka Girl poster at Walmart, and you may have seen it. It's got her on it. And it just says zap that thirst and then it says nuka cola at the bottom there's actually no fallout 4 branding on the poster it literally just looks like a poster for nuka cola so if you're going to do this project i suggest finding a poster that is like that that does not have the fallout 4 branding like as much as you may want to hang up the one that says fallout 4 and has like the power armor on and stuff that poster doesn't really make any fucking sense so get yourself something cool like this that looks like it's just corporate propaganda from back in the day the other thing you're going to need is a bulletin board now uh just make sure that you get one that is basically the correct size for the poster and what we're going to do is take that poster and we're going to attach it onto the bulletin board now once we get the poster on we're going to age it up a little bit we're going to go ahead and uh you know rip some corners and do some stuff to basically get it looking good i'm going to affix this poster on here using super 77 spray adhesive which you can buy anywhere so uh if you watched my throne video that's actually what i used to attach the fabric to the foam so it's just spray on stuff, it's nice and light. It's not gonna leave any weird lumps or wriggles or anything in the uh, poster. It's gonna be nice and smooth and look real good. But if you have another way that you know to do that, you know, you wanna paint something on the back, like wallpaper uh, adhesive or something and stick it on, that'll work fine too. When we're all done, we'll seal it in with some Mod Podge or some sort of clear uh, coat for it. So that way we don't have to worry about it getting uh, any more fucked up than we want it to be. And. Uh, you know, that's pretty much it. Anytime you're working with adhesive, be sure to wear gloves. Trust me, you don't want to get that shit on your hands. It's such a pain in the ass to get off. Just wear some thin gloves, latex, nitrile, whatever. It'll save you a lot of work later on. So as you can see, this poster actually uh, is definitely a little bit big for this board, but that's okay. What we'll do is once we get it on there, we'll take an X-Acto knife and we'll just cut right along the edges and this thing will fit like a glove right in this frame. So let me go ahead and we're gonna glue this one on first and uh, then we'll get into the actual fun stuff. All right, so what I'm doing here is just like if we were using, you know, say like spray paint or something, I'm actually gonna go ahead and, and just tape off the uh, wood here because we don't want that to get too jacked up. Okay, now that everything's all taped off, go ahead and make sure that the nozzle's clear for the spray adhesive. Looks good. <clears throat> and we'll go ahead and just uh, sort of get the top started because it's rolled up, and then we'll work our way down. You want to get good coverage because you really want this to stay in place once it's down. Now when you're doing this, the corners are going to get a little funky on you, so be careful when you're using this straight edge to put stuff and hold it down. <clears throat> You don't want to rip the poster if you're trying to do a nice quality version of this. Now, when we do the distressed side, it won't really make a difference. Go and get yourself a nice sharp razor and then You should very easily be able to find right underneath the frame. Keep this straight and just follow it right down the line. All right. <clears throat> now, if you did this correctly, Yeah. 
you have a pretty nice framed piece of artwork that you can just hang up in your shop or whatever. So the next step to making our poster look aged is to get some fine grit sandpaper. Now the finest stuff I had laying around was a 240, but you know you can use a higher grit or a lower grit depending on what you want to do. But basically we're just going to take this 240 and we're going to work around the edges, you know, just in one direction. And you can see that it is just taking that sort of top cover right off of there. So we're just going to want to be real sort of careful with how hard we're pushing. But we want to make sure we get the corners pretty good. And uh, basically just any areas where you want it to be worn down, you'll go ahead and go over. And any areas where you want it to sort of soak up that aging process as well. But I'm going to go ahead and work on this a little bit. And uh, then we'll go ahead and get into some more of the aging. So that wasn't too bad. I went ahead and used that 240 grit, but I would suggest if you can find something finer, like a 600 or an 800, to go ahead and use that. But you can see how I wore it down in spots to make it come out lighter. I tried not to mess up around her face or around the logos uh, or around the bottle or the words that much, but I just picked a couple of spots where there was some dead space and really sort of put the age on those areas. So what we'll do is we'll get some instant coffee, mix that up, get a small brush, and we'll go through and we're gonna put a couple spots on here. And we're also gonna dribble some on, and we're gonna try to have organized chaos, if possible, so we don't mess up the parts that we don't want to on here. So I went ahead and mixed up some coffee in a jar here. <clears throat> and like I said on my tunic video, I like to use just instant coffee because it's fast. And uh, I'm just gonna use a regular sized paintbrush for this. So really, <clears throat> once you have it worn down, uh, what we wanna do is just sort of give it that aged effect. So I'm gonna go over it real lightly with this coffee at first, just to sort of give it like a uniform coverage. After that, I'm gonna wipe it off, and then we'll go back and we'll make some darker areas. Uh, if you <clears throat> are trying to make any sort of wasteland type post-apocalyptic clothing here uh, like from my other videos this is a good time to use that type of clothing as a rag or wear it because that way when you get stuff all over it it adds to that immersion so I'm gonna go ahead and just start painting this on here nice and lightly now when you did the sandpaper hopefully you went in the same direction if you didn't you're definitely gonna want to make sure that you go in the same direction either left to right or up and down you don't want to do swirls or anything like that because if you do swirls and stuff it's not going to look as good now as far as for this painting this coffee on here you know it we want it to be somewhat uniform but it doesn't have to be perfect and once again we want to go the same direction so same direction with your strokes here now, ideally all the whites turn a light brown now when you get to the part of the poster, you know, where it's her body, if you're turned on by this in some weird way, then you can, you know, just sort of skip that part and just hit, you know, the rest of it. But if not, go ahead and just get all of that too. Just make sure that's not real heavy because you don't want it to interfere with the glue that's underneath. And it won't take much to darken this up. Not much at all. And in fact, I'm gonna go ahead and wipe this down now before it starts doing funky shit to us here. Uh, wait till the coffee is cool. You don't want to put hot coffee on here. So we're getting some crinkling. You can see that this where it says Nuka-Cola down here is darker. I mean that was like white when we started. The best thing to do is if you want to hit this up again is give it some time to dry. 
I actually have a dehumidifier I'm going to set this in front of to really suck that moisture out and uh, go from there. Okay, so I'm going to try to get the glare off here, but I put it in front of a dehumidifier and now all those sort of areas where it bubbled up went back down. If you don't have a dehumidifier, you know, maybe if you have a warm day, put it in a window or something, let those get out. If not, you might have a bunch of little wrinkle spots, but you know what? That would actually add to the character. I kind of wish a couple of them would have stuck around, little wrinkles. They're minor, but not quite as pronounced. I'm going to go ahead and do a couple really dark spots now with the coffee, and those will probably wrinkle, which is fine. You could also use brown paint or something else dark if you wanted to do this. So we'll do our dark spot there. I think maybe I'll do sort of a uh, dark spot here. And then we're actually just going to do a couple flicks of the brush here. Whoops, I got it on her face. You sick motherfuckers. All right. So, there we go. We're going to let this sink in for a little while so it really darkens up. And then we'll go ahead and wipe it off. So, I'm just going to let it sit. Uh, in fact, these real dark areas, I may just let it sit on here until it dries. So, I'm going to go ahead and do that. And uh, we'll show you what it looks like when it's done. So I let this dry for a little bit, but not completely. So now I'm going to tilt it up and just let these run down because if this was hanging on a wall, these marks would actually have run. So we're just going to let it run down the poster here. Now it's going to pull up at the bottom, so you can either leave it pull up like that or you can sort of there's a lot of it you can dab it up with a rag or sh your shirt from your post-apocalyptic costume so <clears throat> I like the way that turned out I'm gonna do a couple more not uh, any place that's gonna interfere with the overall product though like I said I want to try to avoid messing her up too much because it's the focal point of the poster And then once again, I'll let this dry for a minute, and then tilt it up, let it run, and then we'll throw it back in front of my dehumidifier so it dries it up real quick without screwing up the adhesive underneath. And then of course, any of this you have left over while you're using the dehumidifier, you know, you just pour on your post-apocalyptic costume or your rag, let it get some immersion. This is a dark color. Coffee's not gonna show up real well on it, but you know what, I'm still gonna give it a basic tie-dye with it anyhow. So we've added a little bit of age to the poster, but now it's time to get serious. Of course the paper would have faded, it's been a couple hundred years, but we need to make this thing look like it suffered an attack. So, time for the blowtorch. So we're not really trying to stay in the lines. <clears throat> if this is framed, it should all be jacked up. Now, if you wanted to do this before you put it in here, that's fine. If you wanted to chew up the edges and stuff, that's great. Another way to approach this is to not put it in the frame, but actually just mount it on the wall or just mount it on like a large board or something. Um, however, like I said, I mean, this was the approach I wanted to take on my project. You can do whatever you want. Um, if you wanted to burn all the edges first before you put it in here, you could do that. But I'm just gonna kind of go for this sort of organic, you know, feel that the entire project was affected by, you know, whatever chemicals or, you know, flames or whatever attacked it. So we got a couple of little burns on here. Like I said, you know, unless you're really trying to go for a seriously worn look, less is more. So I just wanted to sort of mess up that corner a little bit. There's a few other little spots I touched on it, but I'm not going to do too much with the fire because if you're not real careful, it can get out of hand very quickly. 
So I think that's all I'm going to do with the torch on here is just that one corner. Plus it makes it smell and stuff. So now we'll go ahead and just, uh, you know, do a few other little techniques here to sort of peel up the paper so it looks more aged. So for this next part, we're going to go ahead and work on just the edge here. And what you're going to do is get yourself an X-Acto knife or a really sharp razor. <clears throat> we're just going to try to actually cut between the print and the actual paper to just sort of reveal the white part. Now you could also do this with sanding and just sort of really sand down the corner. And uh, if this isn't working for you, just get the sandpaper and go in there or even a Dremel. In fact, that may be what I end up doing, but for right now, we'll go ahead and use the razor blade. Oh, you don't have a vintage oiler? Oh, I thought everyone had these. All right, so one more thing that we're gonna add <clears throat> is gonna be a scar. And this never really sort of sat right in this area, it bubbled up. So I'm actually going to take that and we're gonna make a scar. And all we're gonna do for that is just take and we're just gonna cut a line straight out through And we're just going to sort of attack this here with the blade. Now I had already burned this little area a bit. So it's falling apart some, but what's not falling apart, we can attack with our blade here. Once we seal this in here, then this will all be sealed over, but we do want it to lay flat, <clears throat> or at least as flat as possible. So this is pretty much the finished project. It'll look great in your gaming room, great as a prop for immersion if you want to hang on the wall at your LARP or something. Uh, as far as the project, you can go a lot further than this by just re-repeating all the steps we did, uh, or maybe using some other steps you know, to age things like I had mentioned, using a Dremel, uh, using some wood stain, using paint, uh, maybe if you have some fake blood splattered on there, whatever you think is going to give you the aesthetic that you like. If you're not certain how something works, though, I suggest trying it on just some regular paper first before you actually go ahead and, you know, try to apply it to your poster so you're not ruining it and wasting a lot of money. I may go further with this later on, but for right now, I think I'm happy with where it's at and we'll go ahead and hang it up. Uh, just make sure that you seal it. Uh, I'm not going to show that part because it's pretty simple. You can either buy Mod Podge. Just make sure you buy the right kind that, so it doesn't stay tacky forever. There are certain kinds that will help you seal this and they don't stay tacky. Uh, you don't have to buy Mod Podge brand. There's other brands out there. You Frog Juice. Um, you could just use a clear coat mat like spray paint. Um, whatever works best for you to seal this in because when you're using coffee and like motor oil and stuff, you want to make sure that that's sealed in because if not, this may be you know funky to touch for a long time. It may smell like coffee, so just keep those things in mind. Uh, you don't even have to go this far with this project. You may have just mounted your uh, picture on the bulletin board, which is you know sort of an expensive way to frame it. But if you do it on the bulletin board, you can actually put, use push pins to push into this. So that's kind of fun. Um, I think later on I may take a marker, like a Sharpie, and I may just draw a little bubble and have her saying something. Uh, <laughs> but we'll see, like I said. For now, the project's done. I hope you liked it. If you did, please click like, subscribe to my channel. Plenty more projects uh, coming down the line. And uh, I really hope you're enjoying my content. If you are, please be sure to share with your friends. Let them know that this channel exists so they can check this stuff out too. And uh, as always...
adventure on. Next level.